بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیئر اینڈ ٹوڈے وی اسٹارٹ نیو ٹاپک ایٹ دا نیو از واٹ دیٹ از دی تھرمل پاور پلانٹ سو ویو سین دی ہائیڈرو الیکٹرک پاور اسٹیشن ان کوائٹ اے ڈیٹیل آئی بلیو سو ٹوڈے اٹس ٹائم فار اسٹڈنگ دی تھرمل پاور پلانٹ اور تھرمل پاور اسٹیشن اور اسٹیم پاور اسٹیشن دس از آلسو کالڈ اسٹیم پاور اسٹیشن سو what do you have over there in the hydroelectric power station the energy of so basically you could say water was converted into electricity water was a source of conversion into electricity over here what do you have you have heat energy converted into electricity but the thing is the heat energy is not directly converted but again we have the same water but over here we use heat to convert the water first into steam and then that steam is used to run the turbine blades and then you have a an alternate coupled so basically what do you do is the the the, the heat energy is used heat energy is used to do what is used to boil water first heat energy is used to boil water and then that boil water that steam you could say that steam is then used to that steam is then converted into electricity you could say or that steam does the useful work to convert to to, to run the the turbine and the turbine is then electricity is produced over in the hydroelectric what do you have water is stored at a particular head so it comes down from the head it through a potential energy converted to kinetic energy and it runs the turbine blades by that with the help of that energy you just did discharge q it was the important parameter over here what do you have is you have a fuel for instance coal you burn it you combustion combustion you the combustion process produces what it produces heat that heat is utilized to convert water in the boiler into steam and that steam does the useful work to rotate the turbine blades and 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 and, and the alternator is then coupled to the turbine and you have what electricity is produced so this is the the process of the thermal energy uh, of this thermal power plant right yes so generating station which converts heat energy of coal combustion into electrical energy is known as a steam power station steam power station works on what it works on a rankine cycle now I don't know this in a greater detail. Well, I would say I would not know it. Rankine cycle, so you 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 know it from your thermodynamics, right? Not a part over here. I I don't want to go into the detail of it. I don't know it even. <laughs> Anyways, steam is produced in the boiler by utilizing the heat of combustion. The steam is then expanded in the prime mover. Prime mover is what? It's the steam turbine, the, which is condensed in a condenser to be fed to the boiler. Again, the steam turbine drives the alternator, which converts mechanical energy of a turbine to electrical energy. This type of power station is suitable where coal and water are available in abundance and large amount of electrical power is to be generated. Now I talked about the boiler, condenser, prime mover. So we'll see this in the schematic arrangement in the next video. I'll, I'll just this one just a, a general video, a, a shorter video, five, not a five or 10 to 12 minutes video, but uh, we will see the schematic arrangement in a greater detail in the next video. We see the advantages over here. So the advantages are what, what the book says is that the fuel is quite cheap. The fuel is quite cheap. Fuel is cheap. Now, uh, this is, they are talking with reference to the diesel power station. Over here, the fuel they are talking is mainly coal, okay? So, they are talking of coal. So, coal is uh, cheaper relatively to petrol, relatively to, to diesel, relatively to other nuclear power plants. But, it is not cheap as compared to water right water is a free source of energy so this thermal power station is cheaper relative to others but it is expensive relative to the hydroelectric power station 
so the but the fuel is quite cheap coal is quite cheap as compared to other fuels you have less initial cost the initial cost of the building setup etc is less as compared to hydroelectric also even the third is it can be installed at any place irrespective of coal existence so so you can install it at any place i would write over here install at any place and they say what that irrespective of the existence of coal why because coal can be transported coal can be transported so you install it anywhere but you have you need to have a system to reach it the coal should reach the power plant either by means of road by means of rail mainly these are done through uh, rails right so uh, okay it requires less space as compared to hydroelectric power plant hydroelectric power plant required a huge space first of all the reservoir for the water storage then the dam construction then the machinery so the machinery over here is also quite big but the thing is you don't have that reservoir and dam construction although you have a coal storage which requires a larger space as well but it is still lesser space less space as compared to hydroelectric power plant right yes and finally we have what the cost of generation is lesser than the diesel power plant the cost of generation is less than the diesel power station so i would write over here cost of generation is less than they have written over here is diesel so in the cost what do you have one is the capital cost or the fixed cost and then you have what then you have the running cost so the capital cost of the hydroelectric is quite high we said that the running cost is quite low over here the cost of generation they have said again that this is less than diesel the operating cost the, the running cost is over here is greater than the uh, in greater than the the hydroelectric whereas the the fixed charges or the annual cost that is i believe lesser than the the hydroelectric fine yes they've also got two disadvantages they've also got two disadvantages this is higher than water right okay the cost of generation is higher than that of water what are the disadvantages so let us see we've got two disadvantages over here the first is pollution of course pollution you've got a fuel you are combusting it so there would be there would be smoke of course there would be fumes there would be flu gases dangerous gases so environmental pollution health hazard is the number one concern is the number one disadvantage environmental pollution and i would write over here also health hazards health hazards fine and and what have they written the second the second is it's costlier in running cost as compared to hydroelectric so i've already told you the running cost is what is higher than hydroelectric the capital cost is less the capital cost is less that i mentioned in the uh, the capital cost less initial cost this is the advantage whereas the running cost is higher this is the disadvantage of this the overall efficiency is also quite low the overall efficiency so if we talk about the choice of site first of all the choice of site where can we uh, you know set up this thermal power station so i would give a heading over here is the choice of site choice of site or site considerations so over here what have the book mentioned is number first is the supply of fuel the supply of fuel so you could do what you could uh, set up this plant of course nearer to a coal mine where your coal is available so you can set it up over there or you could also set it up far away from there where the but then you would have to keep in mind your transportation cost you would have to keep in mind your transportation cost whatever by means whatever the means of transportation may be but you would have to keep in mind your transportation cost so it may be nearer to the coal station coal mine or far away from it then you need to have availability of water 
So availability of water again an important aspect why because you are you know utilizing the heat from the coal combustion to do what to turn the water into steam and again the water it is the water that is doing the useful work similarly then you also need to have some extra amount of water that is you know a, a river or a lake we'll see it in the next video is then that you need it to in the condenser when the water is condensed so you combine some more water from the river or the lake and it's fed back to the boiler again so you need to have an extra source of water again over here so you need to have availability of water to ensure the continuous supply of water transportation facilities of course so number first transportation facilities are for uh, for the coal for the fuel and then for the machinery etc as well you have to transport your heavy equipment your heavy machinery so you should have your transportation facilities cost and type of land cost and type of land so of course we also talked about this in the hydroelectric that the cost should not be as high and and the cost cost is a very major factor especially for poor countries like pakistan cost is is the main factor not a major factor cost is the main factor the other factors are are negotiable cost is not so you have to keep in mind the cost of the land and for the type of the land what do you say the, the 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 bearing capacity of the land you have to install heavy machinery over that so you have to do proper research on the bearing capacity of the land as well similarly similarly you also have to keep in mind a generation extension you, you want to extend your uh, generating station so for that you should also have some land you should have a proper work done on that first so they have written near list load centers although this is uh, this is not should should not be included over here but near list to load centers now this was previously done as uh, for uh, when we and, and 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 previously talking of the dc voltages if you talk of the dc voltage so stepping it up and down was quite you know it uh, was not easier for now now we have the ac system so you have to transmit it over long distance you just step up the voltage uh, the current level reduces the power losses reduces step it up to a higher value the more the higher value the lesser the power losses of course right so uh, the transmission losses reduces so over here they basically talked about the nearest load center this is uh, uh, maybe for, for, for the previous uh, whatever i could say uh, an older uh, concept that the uh, that the generating station should be nearer to the load center so that the, the transmission cost should be least as possible today again you've got efficient system you step up the voltage the rest you know so anyways and then you should have what distance from the populated areas distance from populated areas so this is a very important one why because we've already said that this is a major factor uh, of what uh, a major factor of pollution uh, you know the coal combustion pollution flue gases environmental hazards dangerous gases sulfur oxides nitrogen dioxides quite dangerous gases are uh, over here because self, uh, the coal consists of some amount of sulfur nitrogen hydrogen so they form oxides and then they are dangerous enough fine yes so the conclusion they have written over here these are the some choices of sites that we've mentioned of course you you need to have a trade-off between one and the other you want it to you, you it, it cannot be the, that that the site is you know fulfilling all these conditions so you will have to have a trade-off between one and the other and that is the thing the major thing would be what the cost the cost for all of these transportation costs setup cost cost of land transmission cost etc etc if i talk about the overall efficiency of the steam power station so it is quite low the efficiency the efficiency of the power of the steam power station is quite low i would write it 29 to 30 percent a book has i believe mentioned 29 percent so it is quite low about 29 percent due to mainly two losses the first is what heat losses heat losses are the first thing and the second one is that uh, and secondly heat losses occur at various stages of the plant so number first so basically the reason is what heat losses 
through the walls of the furnace, through the boiler, through, through the economizer, through many other stages. So heat losses. So in many in other countries, you could say Europe, etc. The heat losses are you know um, uh, made to run gas turbines in parallel with this. Similarly, they can be used to do what to to heat up buildings, right? Yes. In our country, no. These are heat lost lost so you only have 30 percent of your heat left to convert it to electricity so you have to utilize it quite well thermal efficiency overall efficiency so why don't you read it out by yourself why don't you read it out by yourself or anyways i would just write it so first they have written is your thermal efficiency so the thermal efficiency is what so this is basically the heat equivalent of mechanical energy turbo to the turbine shaft heat equivalent of mechanical energy transmitted to what to the turbine shaft and this divided by what heat of combustion divided by the heat of coal combustion yes So what are you doing basically is that you are combusting your fuel so that is used to run the turbine over there so the heat equivalent of the mechanical energy to run the turbine that is the output divided by the input is what the input is the heat of the coal combustion so this gives you a thermal efficiency this is eta thermal and this is about 30 percent this is about 30 percent this is about 30 percent what have they written is it means that if 100 calories of heat is supplied by coal combustion the mechanical equivalent energy of 30 calories will be available to run the turbine shaft and the rest is lost it means more than 50 percent of the heat is lost in the condenser the other heat losses occur in flue gases radiation ash etc so the losses over here have occurred where the losses occur in the condenser in the flue gases what have they written else radiation ash so we'll see this in the next video radiation ash etc we'll see this and then you have what you have your overall efficiency you have your overall efficiency so I will write that also over here is your overall efficiency and this comes uh, this is what this is equal to the heat equivalent of electrical output so overall efficiency is your electrical output right yes so heat equivalent of electrical output and this divided by the heat of coal combustion i believe yes of course heat of the combustion of coal heat of combustion of coal so what do you have the overall efficiency of the system is about 29 percent about 29 percent so the overall efficiency is again less than the thermal efficiency of the system by one person and you could say that this one person occur in the alternator this one person occur in the alternator the one person loss right yes the overall efficiency basically eta overall i would write over here is what is the eta thermal into eta electrical fine yes sir so i believe that i should finish this video over here what do you say about it yes so i finish it so i finish it because this is getting longer this was just a this was just a basic introduction to the thermal power station what do you have is your water is converted to steam and that steam is uh, running the turbine shaft advantages disadvantage choice of site efficiency the overall efficiency is quite low over here Thermal, the, the, the efficiency of a hydroelectric power station is quite high 80% 85% right yes I'll see in the next video with what with the topic of the schematic arrangement of the thermal power plant till then take care goodbye